So we have worked with a lot of clients over the years, and not all of them have actually been successful, but there's still really cool lessons to learn from those products, and there were really cool ideas tried out throughout those projects. And that's what we're gonna talk about with Wacky Bobbers today, fully customized floating fishing bobbers. So Wacky Bobbers were designed to be customized fishing bobbers. Right now, if you went out to a supermarket or a fish and tackle shop, you'd find the traditional red and white fishing bobbers sitting there. And then if you were feeling really special, sometimes you can find them in the shape of a shotgun shell or maybe just a piece of cork that's floating. But there's not a lot of variation. So the team at Wacky Bobbers wanted to kind of address this. They were kind of pursuing the idea of the family fishing trip or a kid going fishing with their grandparents. And they wanted to create something that was a little bit more interesting than a red and white ball floating out there on the water. Now, for all the fishermen out there, this is not about functionalism. This is about the experience and the action of fishing. No, if you're fishing in the rapids or an avid bass fisherman, you wouldn't use one of these things. But if you're a five-year-old kid, this is what these were meant to be targeted towards. The kid having fun on the fishing trip, even though they might not be catching something. Because they wanted to do this, they needed to have a lot of variation. They wanted to have a sinking ship, a shark jumping out of the water. They wanted to have all kinds of different variations. They wanted to mess with the idea of bullets and that kind of thing to create create shapes that were interesting and kind of fun to mess around with. But the issue was that these had to be waterproof. They couldn't use traditional injection molding because this was an experimental product line. They were only gonna do a few thousand of them to try out initially and then go from there to see if, how people reacted and then target in on those particular skews that people were interested. Oh, people like the shark. Well, maybe we should build three other variations of jumping fish and go from there. They didn't wanna to commit to one single design, which is the smart way to do it because you don't always know for sure what the customer is going to want. So they wanted to shoot very broadly and try everything with very low numbers of uh, quantities but then actually figure out which ones people liked and move from there. They had their e-commerce web store where they were gonna sell these through and then also work with individual stores like uh, Cabela's or Bass Pro Shops and that kind of thing to move these fishing bobbers. The price restriction on this was that they had to sell a set of three for about nine to $15. That was the range that they were targeting in order to be profitable. So these bobbers themselves had to be manufactured for less than $3 for that set. Definitely less than five, even in the worst case, which is not a doable. I mean, it's really easy to do actually, as a matter of fact, even though that was at the very early time, this was probably about 2018, 2019, when we took on this project, even before Slant 3D was officially spun out of Slant Concepts. Even at that time, we had the scale to accommodate that and the cost per unit to hit that. So it was doable. Then the next challenge came to be the waterproofing, which was not as hard as you may think. Even though 3D printing is laid down in layers, it introduces a lot of opportunity to create leakage. But a fishing bobber isn't something that has to be as ruggedly waterproof as like a diver's watch or something that has to go down to 150 meters. It has to take the water pressure of the surface of the water and a kid dropping it in there. It cannot leak, it cannot absorb water over the span of about five to 10 hours to be perfectly reliable. That's very doable. In fact, like the IP ratings for like many of your phones are not that high. You cannot drop your phone in a lake and leave it there, but your phone can fall into water and come back out and be okay so long as it doesn't sit there and soak. So the waterproofness of these objects was not very high. That being said, we hit that rating and knocked it out of the park. These bobbers were able to sit in water for days without absorbing it. And we were able to set up a standard and a new type of slicing profile that allowed them to be waterproof for that period of time without adding any extra cost or any kind of reliability issues in manufacturing. Now, all the different sizes and shapes that they had restricted this a little bit, and we had to work really closely with the team to make sure that we designed products that were manufacturable with this. They could not have overhangs, they could not have support anywhere because that would have created a delamination point that would have caused that kind of leaking. But the Wacky Bobbers were a good set of designs. Ultimately, they launched with about 10 to 15 SKUs, but they ran into a number of issues around marketing cost and getting into the big box retailers because they don't wanna buy it until you already have proven sales, but proven sales were too expensive at the price point that they were going for. So there was a business model problem with it. But the design of the products, quite frankly, was really good and it shows a way to pursue product design. Rather than trying to knock it out of the park with a single product where you create one perfect item, which is probably not perfect because no product ever is on the first launch, instead of doing that and then buying a million of them and swinging for the fence and hoping that somebody buys it and everybody sells out your inventory because you're so brilliant, they went for low volume of a couple thousand units 
across many different SKUs to find what people were interested in, and then they were gonna focus in on those SKUs and then scale up from there. They could have continued on with 3D printing and continued to focus in on a particular type of SKU and then diversify, which 3D printing would have enabled, and then they would also have reduced their inventories, reduced their overall capital expenditure, and moved on from there. But in the context and creation of any kind of business, there's all kinds of things that can cause a business to fail, and manufacturing and cash flow are not always the main things. Exterior factors can do it. A lot of folks learned that like during the pandemic. No matter how well prepared you were, you might not have been ready for something like that. But Wacky Bobbers is an excellent example to learn from of what the capabilities of 3D printing are to produce good quality products that go onto store shelves. The scale that they can reach, where today we could take Wacky Bobbers into millions and they'd be perfectly profitable. But it also tells you how to approach the creation of a product now that you have the flexibility of a 3D printing supply chain. Have a great day, everybody.